being a junk journal is satisfying and fun. We feel productive and creative when we put a new one together. But filling a journal is special. Whatever our standard, our style or approach, the result is unique and should fill us with pride. So in this week's video, I'm sharing my personal journal, a page turn of a dozen or so spreads. I hope to inspire your artwork, your journaling, your craft and creative process. And if, like me, you are that junk journal addict and you do love art and junk journals and playing with paper, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because I have lots more videos and ideas to come. So this is the journal that I want to talk through and share with you today. There are about 12 or 13 spreads in here and the journal itself is about five and a half inches that way and seven and a half inches that way. So that's 14 centimetres by 19 centimetres. And as you can see, it's got some chunk to it now, which is really quite satisfying. So I thought it was time to share some of what I've done and, and really just hope to inspire you and what you're up to. Let me know what you're doing decorating your own journals. I'd love to hear more about that. So if we turn to the beginning, I'll just talk through each page and just share a few thoughts about what I've put together, describe it, and maybe talk you through some of the supplies that I've used in each spread. This one was a spread in response to Junk Journal January, which was a an Instagram-based sharing of spreads that we were all creating in our own styles and approaches. I've got on the left-hand side here a bit of inspiration for the colour of the spread. So this is a page from a children's book, and I've just taken the purple and the green and reflected that on the right hand side here. You can see I've used a bit of washi in purple which is consistent with the purple on the lady's dress over here and that's come from my ever-growing collection of washi tapes so I'm having a lot of fun using these to just add a bit of feature colour and add a bit of detail. You often get small patterns on these so I'm putting those into the designs of my art and junk journal spreads. I've also, on this page, used a little bit of watercolour, so I just pulled a bit of the lovely natural greens out of the White Knights palette that I use a lot and put that on the back to take away some of the white paper. On several of these spreads I've used my really relatively cost-effective set of watercolour paints here, and these were about £7 from Hobbycraft, which is a shop in the UK, uh, this is about three times the cost. You'll find that on Amazon actually, that's really easy to find on Amazon. So it's a White Knights palette um, of £12. This one is, it was meant to be about lifting the mood. It's got those blue and yellow sort of March, April colours in there. I've got some music paper which is old wrapping paper, a little bit of K&Co scrapbook paper with some writing on. Here I've got a stamp and I've coloured that with my White Knights palette and that's been stamped onto a bit of old book paper and I do like using books in all sorts of different ways in a junk and art journal. I've stamped a little dragonfly on a bit of book paper here and again I've brought the paint onto the layering that I've added to this spread. And this is just a little piece from a very personal journal that I've been been using. So my mum really loved the weather and kept her own journal of the weather here in the UK and I've just been using little pieces to just add a little bit of something to my art and junk journals. So that's just a really personal page for me. This one is more about natural colours and greens as you can see. A stamp that I've used several times, a foam La Blanche stamp that I've stamped onto just a bit of craft cardstock. In fact, that again is the central roll from wrapping paper. A little bit of old book paper. I've splashed a bit of paint on at the bottom here to give it a natural feel so that the plant is actually looking like it's growing out of the soil. And I've also used my paints again to paint that. I love music paper in junk journals, whether it's the basic backing of the page or it's some extra pieces that we just add on. So. That was rather white, so I've aged it by using a piece of foam and some chalk and just rubbing the chalk onto the foam to begin with 
and then rubbing that into the page. And it's a really quick way if your page is too white, too glaring for you and you haven't got coffee dyed paper to just have something that blends and looks a bit older. And I've added some extra layering, ripping some paper here, old book page and a little bit of a stamp here to add some texture. This is an Anna Griffin sentiment. I think that's really pretty font. I've added a bit of faux stitching and I've backed that onto a bit of black paper just to lift it through some layering. So this page is a result of a fantastic collaboration that I had here on YouTube and that was one of my commitments to myself to collaborate more in 2019 through this fantastic YouTube network of crafty people. So that's you, that's me, that's everybody out there. So this is a piece of artwork that was sent to me by Julia McNeil. She has a channel here on YouTube, I will link that down below. And on the left hand side here I just made a little pocket and did a doodle on it. And the doodle is one that I found from this brilliant botanical line drawing book by Peggy Dean. A ton of really simple instructions, so don't think that I'm very good at doodling, I'm just trying to learn, of all sorts of different botanicals, flowers, succulents, cherry blossom, marigold, primrose, all sorts of different styles of little doodle that you could have a go at and learn to do yourself. I love the colours, do you like the colours? Tell me if you like these colours. So a rich raspberry cranberry red and some oranges and I just thought Julia had chosen some wonderful vibrant colours over here on the right. And also this deep green. It's a, it's sort of a forest Christmas tree green. So I thought I would bring that out. This is from the paper itself and I just painted this trying to marry up with the colours from this paint set. Three little bits of cute paper trying again to get some sort of coordination Here's the green, here's the black, here's the orange. So black and orange and the pinks coming through. So that page was again quite a lot of fun. I've got a bit more of Julia's artwork in one of my other journals which is filling up. When this one is super full I'll do a, a proper page turn on it. But here, my February and March journal, you can just see here another page from Julia's artwork which I think is a stamp that somehow she has coloured in and it's got texture. I wish you could have feel a vision through YouTube. I can feel a roughness where she's defined the outside of the petals so there's something really special about that page. So that again is another piece of collaboration artwork that I was the very grateful beneficiary of. Morpho stitching, there's a little bit of gold glitter behind here. You can't beat a bit of glitter every now and again in your artwork. So, all about teal. How about a bit of the spring coming alive through a butterfly? I treated myself to the use of a bit of glitter glue. I've got stamping and watercolouring on old book paper here. I've used an old encyclopedia and here's one of the other doodles from the book that I've had a go at. Again, I've got use of washi paper a tiny bit of old music paper and I've splashed a bit of colour from my watercolours on the page as well. So this was a different set of colours, a different colour palette for me. I'm not normally a blue colour palette person but I just thought I'd have a go and do something different. So this page, and I haven't done the pages in order by the way, this page for some reason just made me think of Alice in Wonderland. So I did a bit of writing on, this is actually a tip-in, so an extra page I added. Really, really lovely old vintage book paper. And maybe it's the red heart over here in quite textured paper. So this is from a, so a handheld punch. So it's quite easy to use and quite a cute heart shape, I think. And I've just brought together a mix of colors, the, the red, the yellow, and the green, so fresh perhaps, using an old book again, a bit of stripy paper and then a, a little bit of journaling here. I like to use these not only to have an arty spread but I do like to put some thoughts and memories into my journals by just jotting a few notes here and there. I made a little banner and stapled that in and underneath I've got some watercoloured music paper, a little bit of paper from the office 
and I think this was one of my mum's old books as well so I've been deconstructing those. So turning the pages, so this one I have to say is a nod to Elizabeth Brewer so those of you who know Lizzie Brewer she has a YouTube channel again I'll link it and she has a Facebook page but she is all about unicorns so this is a page with some dotty scrapbook paper and some complimentary little pages that I put in this pocket so just cut some things up added a heart if we open it up so it's a fold out this is actually the result of a bit of a mistake so one thing I would say is if you feel like it's not working on your page just keep going it doesn't matter I, I put some layers in and I added some silver paint and I just thought I'd have a go at something different and then I used some of my five petal flowers and they feature a bit later as well I didn't like it to begin with I carried on and then I got to a stage where I was actually quite comfortable and happy with with what I had so make sure that it's fun what you're doing don't be too self-critical um, but also feel it's okay to stop and step away and come back because sometimes when you're doing a journal spread that's what gives you fresh inspiration I have a collection of pockets envelopes um, little stamped pretty pictures to put on in a, a little plastic wallet I've got some tags here that will have ribbons added to them. I've got all sorts that I sit and make so that when I want to put a spread together I'm not starting from absolutely nothing and I would then pull out something that I think works. Now you might have to create something because you don't have it handy but it is nice to have a few things readily available so that's something that I'm finding quite useful to get some of these spreads done. This one's a bit different so a pocket on the left here another little pocket with a serrated edge over here and some extra little bits of ephemera. On the right hand side I stamped from a collection of La Blanche foam stamps. I've got various little pictures and I just picked one and then I had a go at colouring it in the common theme, the common colour palette that I'd selected of purples, greens, yellows, those fresh spring colours uh, to just try and give a little bit of interest to this side and I really like stamping and colouring and writing on old book pages there is just something refreshing and inspiring about adding a picture to a book page and it worked particularly well on this one I think because this page from The Tempest is quite white paper so it allowed the picture to come through without it having to be particularly strong colours in that colour palette. So just have a go at stamping on book paper and colouring it in, it's just really good fun. This again is a, a tip in, so this page has been added with washi. I stamped on the left with a cheeky little bird and I painted the whole thing. I've got some extra washi tape that came from Julia McNeil again so that's really nice because it's got some text on and this spotty rust colour features in the little cluster of five petal flowers that I added over here and I also found an ink so I have stamped here in the same complementary colour so I've got this sort of swoosh of colour coming across the page and plenty of space to write. This is just the off cut from punching the edge of a piece of scrapbook paper and I keep the remains that come off I put them in a little box and then occasionally I just have a rummage and think what goes on the page what would add some contrast so this one is about definitely about spring so a little stamp I haven't coloured this one in I think I'll just leave that as the pure imprint without painting it a cute little woodpecker here and he's been made into a pocket, some spotty paper, some naturals behind, checkerboards, there's quite a lot of contrast going on on this page. I've put one of my handmade envelopes in, I have a huge collection of handmade envelopes in all different shapes and sizes. And I've got some extra watercolour I've painted behind. This I did at a similar time to making some of my other spring journals, so as the weather's turning or should I say as we wish it to turn I've just been 
really interested and keen to grab some of that sense of freshness and new life in new yellows and greens into some basic journals. So these are in a video that I did last week. So that's a bit more about the lilacs. That's quite chunky already. This was more about the yellows and blues. And then I just was on a bit of an addictive spree. So I put together a few others. And those of you who saw last week's video will have seen these in a bit more detail. And thank you to you to those of you who have been sharing your pictures on my Facebook page. It's brilliant seeing what you've done. So feel free to put your pictures of your projects onto my Facebook page. I'd love to see them. So turning the page here, more of the spring. We've got the five petal flower mixture here in some really big flowers, a splosh of the bright paint, a quite a tall and thin, so different shape to a pocket that I made, serrated edge. Oh, I've got something in there, forgotten about that. So we've got some little bits of paper, different sizes, different patterns, and I tucked that into a pocket. This is a little pocket on here made of old music paper and it's got that crinkle. I don't know, do you like crinkly paper? Is it me who's just a bit, a bit mad, but I love crinkly paper. Now, something a bit more muted, the naturals, botanicals, so a, a bit of a, a place to tuck in and put some extra papers in. And again, I've used that chalk method to put chalk on a foam, rub it in. I've done watercolouring on the page here and these little leaves, they're not only punched out, but they have a little bit of embossing. It comes through better on some papers. It's this huge, rather weighty punch, which says Woodware as the brand. Have any of you seen this before? Do any of you have this? And if so, how do you use it? Let me know. It you know, needs a really good push to, to stamp out the leaf, but really nice because you get that feel of the veins in the leaf. So I thought I'd do that in a couple of colours and I've brought those colours into a picture that I've stamped. This is an acrylic stamp and I've put that on, I think it's my mind's eye scrapbook paper. So some interesting colours and very different from you know, the really bright and vibrant colours in some of the other pages. And I think that's what it's about, it's variety, it's whatever the mood is of the moment when you open your book and you want to have a play. And then just finally, a page with a turn out, a flip out, whatever we call this. This has a handmade tag. That's got some depth, there's some foam on that. I've painted it to make it look older. I've got the, the deeper raspberry reds on this one and the lovely sumptuous olive green paper. That's textured, I think that's basil cardstock and just variety, a bit of the botanicals going on, this beautiful flower and the scenery. So this is from a book about the countryside, the English countryside that I've pulled to bits and been making into pockets and I've just attached that with a washi. So that is 12 or 13 pages, it's nearly full of my very personal arty junk journal. I will do a few more pages in it and then no doubt I'll start another. I would love to hear what you're doing with your junk and art journals. Drop me a comment down below and if you've enjoyed this then hit the subscribe button, ding that little notification bell and come back next week because I have lots more videos and ideas to come. I'll see you soon. Bye!